basically the fundamental building block of all these circuits right and as a designer you need to understand what the transistor does at least at some level of abstraction right so uh, the transistor can be studied as a separate course in in a device you know semiconductor devices course we are not going to go into that level of detail i need a certain abstraction that will help me make my decisions in digital circuit design very well with respect to that i will teach what is necessary about the transistor right how how do you how do you get the expression for the current what affects the current what are the model parameters that one a designer should know about you know these kind of questions we will answer in this module okay what are the learning objectives okay again once you are done with this module you should be able to explain short short channel effects it's called sce right so when i bring the channel may when i when i bring the diffusions very close right the channel becomes very small that introduces some non idealities so that is something you should be able to explain like drain induced barrier lowering gate induced drain leakage sub threshold leakage channel link modulation and so on right then you should be able to derive the equation for the on current of a cmos transistor with first order short channel effects okay we will do all of this then the most important thing is you should be able to estimate various capacitance and resistance components of a transistor because ultimately going forward i want to measure delay and not surprisingly delay of a transistor is just given by r into c i need to be able to estimate these components and figure out how the transistor behaves with respect to resistance and capacitance okay so the outline okay this i am going to just briefly tell you about silicon and doping and the pn junction only with respect to what we need for the cmos transistor i am not going to go into deriving the uh, current equation for a pn junction and all that that's for a different course very quickly i will jump into the cmos transistor and define what threshold voltage is how what the on current is we will derive what the on current is channel link modulation velocity saturation sub threshold leakage you know a host of other short channel effects so what you see here right basically from here channel link modulation on till reverse short channel effect those are all the effect of bringing the diffusions very close by so i'll do all of that and some leakage mechanisms also right that a digital designer should be worried about and then we'll do the capacitance and resistance estimation okay so with that let's just quickly jump into the the uh, transistor and of course the semiconductor that is used is silicon why is silicon because it has good mobility but it also has a very fantastic thing called a silicon dioxide which can serve as the oxide insulator and forming the silicon dioxide is very easy so the interface is nothing you just oxidize the silicon you get a good silicon dioxide there so that makes the transistor manufacturing relatively much easier compared to if you try to do it with other semiconductors right so what is silicon basically it has four valence electrons electrons right which means that in a lattice it's going to sit like this right and you have covalent bonds which are connected like this okay and as i increase the temperature from 0 kelvin onwards some electrons can break free from this bond and be avail uh, be made available for conduction this can re result in a free electron okay what is now the quickly the order of magnitude again the silicon density is what yeah 10 par 22 right ha huh? per 
centimeter cube. Okay, in one cm cube, you have 10 power 22 atoms. Now, at room temperature, right, which is what about 27 Kelvin, uh, 27 degrees centigrade, 300 Kelvin. The number of free electrons that are available is basically called Ni. Why? Because it is intrinsic silicon, it has nothing else. Number of free electrons is equal to number of holes. Absence of an electron can be treated as a hole for this course. Number of electrons obviously is equal to number of holes because I have to ma maintain charge balance, right? And that is what order of magnitude again. I do not want 10 power. 10 power 10 per centimeter cubed. Okay. Clearly, this, this number is not high enough for me to achieve the conduction that I need, right. So, therefore, what you do is you go ahead and replace this silicon atom by, let us say, phosphorus. Okay. Phosphorus now has how many valence electrons? Five. So, therefore, the phosphorus has four electrons that it forms a covalent bond with, right. And this electron can easily be released above 0 Kelvin, not at 0 Kelvin. If you increase the temperature, much easier it gets released, okay, and is available for conduction, okay. This act of replacing the silicon atom in the lattice with another atom like phosphorus or boron which is trivalent is called doping, okay. This is process is called doping. Now, once this free electron is released from phosphorus, what happens to the charge of that phosphorus atom? Yeah, yeah. So, this will become positive, right. The phosphorus atom, the electron is now free, available for conduction. The phosphorus atom is a positive charge, but it is immobile because it is in the lattice, it is stuck in the lattice. It does not contribute to any current or current flow in general, okay. So, now the question is at room temperature, how many such free electrons will I have, okay. It turns out that if your doping is high enough, then at room temperature all the atoms are ionized, phosphorus atoms get ionized. And therefore, the number of electrons at room temperature is just the doping concentration, right. And this is the phosphorus atom is giving an electron. So, it is called a donor, right. And the concentration of phosphorus is Nd, the doping concentration, right. This is doping concentration. Typically, it is about 10 power 15 per centimeter cube. Okay, note that it is 5 orders of magnitude higher than the intrinsic silicon free electron concentration. So, there that is why I am not worried about what happens to this uh, free electrons that come from some of the silicon atoms. That also happens, but that number is so small I can neglect it, right. So, effectively I have like number of free electrons at room temperature is 10 power 15 per centimeter cube, right. Now, how many holes are there in this doped semiconductor? So, it turns out that there is a law of mass action that determines that. Law of law of mass action. Okay, what does this say? It says that the intrinsic the uh, concentration of electrons into holes is a constant and that is basically n i square, okay. So, therefore, if n equal to n d, what is p? n i squared by n d, okay. Now, there is also an other equation called the Maxwell Boltzmann equation okay, which just tells you that if I have two points in a semiconductor, okay, this is my, let us say silicon here. Some reason I have 
I have caused a charge imbalance, not, not an, it does not violate conservation of charge, but there is more concentration of electrons here N1 and N2, okay. And let us say N1 and N2 are different, then it turns out that there will be a potential difference between these two points which is basically psi 1 2 and the relation is given by n 1 by n 2 is e power psi 1 2 by k t by q. k is the Boltzmann constant, t is the temperature, q is the charge of the electron, okay. And this is important to know k t by q at room temperature is approximately 25 millivolt. Okay, you can work it out, just substitute T equal to 300 Kelvin, work out the constants and you will get this, okay. So, you should know this number, 25 millivolt is an important number for a digital designer, right. So, this is basically called uh, the, is it called Boltzmann equation, yeah, it is called the Maxwell Boltzmann equation not just the Boltzmann equation, okay. Now, what happens? So, what I have done is with this equation here, I have completely bypassed this theory of uh, Fermi levels and other things. I have abstracted out all that I need for my, for this course, right. And in fact, you can even go ahead and do lot of device derivations using this, just this assumption, okay. Uh, the book called Cividis actually does it like this, MOS, the MOS transistor, it works exactly like this. So, this abstraction is very, very useful, not just for digital design engineers, it is also good for device guys. Now, what do I do? I cannot do much with just uh, N type semiconductor, right. So, that is the donor semiconductor is called N type semiconductor because I have more electrons than holes, right. I can take two semiconductor blocks which are doped differently and connect them together like this, okay. So, the let us say this is N D, this is N A. So, instead of phosphorus if I put boron, boron is trivalent, there is going to be one electron absent and therefore, it is like a hole that is available. Okay, that is the abstraction that we need. So, I have an N type semiconductor here, I have a P type semiconductor here, right. So, I can even maybe say that dopant equals phosphorus and here it is boron. So, now what happens? You basically have excess electrons on the N side and excess of holes on the P side. So, therefore, they will now start diffusing, right. So, the free electron from this side will go here, the free hole from this side will come here. Remember that once the electron comes this side, what happens to the atom from which that electron was released? It is a positive charge. So, what happens is effectively on the N side you will have immobile positive charges like this and on the P side you will have immobile negative charges that are formed, okay. So, ultimately there will be a region like this here and a region here this is called space charge region. Space charge region basically it says that there is no free electron or hole that is available for conduction there because moment you have a positive charge on the N side and a negative charge you will have an electric field coming from the N to P right, you have an electric field here. So, if any free electron enters that region, it will be driven the other way. If a hole enters, it will be driven in the direction of the field to the other side. So, this is basically devoid of any 
charges and you will have what is known as a built in potential across this region space charge region. Okay. So now let us you know calculate how how much how far this has to go okay on both sides. Let us say that this went up to a distance of W n and this went up to a distance of W p okay on the p side the distance of the depletion region it is also called a depletion region by the way this is also called depletion region. Okay. How do I relate WN and WP? Huh? Yeah, basically charge neutrality, right. So, therefore, if the concentration of ho ho electrons, right, on this side is ND, I mean concentration of dopant atoms is ND, right, then the number of po positive charges is what? Q times ND into W n into the area, let us say the cross section is like this and this is the area A, right. Then into A is the total volume, W n into A is the total volume, this is the total charge, this has to be Q times uh, W p into n A into area. So, W n into N d is W p into N a. So, what does this basically say? It says that W into N is a constant. So, the main takeaway for us here is if N d is much much greater than N a let us say, it implies that W p will be much much greater than W n, correct, clear. So, now ok we have a relation between W p and W n, but what about W p plus W n, how far will that go? So, that will go only as far as I am now, now what do I have? I have two sem in, a, in a semiconductor I have two points, point 1 is here this is point 2, there is an electron concentration at point 1, there is an electron concentration which is different at point 2, right and therefore, they have to be related by the Maxwell Boltzmann relation, right. So, they which basically says N 1 by N 2 is E power Q times built in potential V B i by K T, right. This let me call it V B i. Now, what is the electron concentration at point 1? n yeah so n1 equal to nd what is the whole concentration at point 2 yeah so the p2 is na which means n2 is how much yeah ni squared by na therefore i can now divide this as n n d by n i squared into n a equals e power q v b i by k t. Therefore, built in potential is k t by q ln of n a n d by n i squared ok. This is all we need from the semiconductor device physics for us to go ahead and understand all of MOS transistors for digital design. At least first order short channel effects all that we can handle with this, okay.